Fish on, y'all. I just know y'all hear me stomping on the floor. Y'all ever heard the old saying? Make a little noise and the sand bass will come. That's the sand bass right there, y'all. AKA white bass. You can see them here on the screen. I literally saw two or three come by. There's that, there's that sand bass going down right now. See that green dot going down? But all those fish are under my boat because I'm doing this. Hey guys, hey, real quick, I was out here to do some crappie fishing, man, but things have changed for the sake of bringing y'all some different content, man, look, I'm stomping on the ground right now because right below me is a bunch of sandbag, and I have a Euro Tackle T-Flasher and Chartreuse that I'm trying, I'm cold, I'm trying to get my doggone hands together. Us. We're about to do a sand bass, aka white bass. Ooh, 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 they are down there. Catch, clean, and cook, y'all. Hope y'all are ready for this one. Um, sand bass can be a good eating fish, man, if you do right. But I'm using my seven and a half foot ACC crappie stick. My hands don't want to work. God almighty. They are under the boat. They're staying there, so I'm going to try to take my time and show y'all how we're going to catch these crappie. My God, y'all know what I'm used to catching. Catch these sand bass, AKA white bass. I don't have a, don't have a thumper, but what I do have is some legs. And what I'm doing guys is just stomping on the bottom of the boat and it's keeping them fish active, wanting to find out where there's something to eat. Now I have to hurry up and get this dog on bait down there. I mean, it's, it's a school of them and they are just looking they're just looking for something to eat. So we're gonna give them what they want in a tea flash. The only problem is they're gonna pay for it with their life. I'm gonna get this thing tied up, man. All right, guys, Euro Tackle T Flasher. I'm gonna drop this right below the boat. I do have the live scope going. It's getting down there fast, which I love. We're gonna see if we can get one of these to bite this T Flasher. I'm just gonna, oh, we got one coming. Never be there, okay. Oh, he hit it. I missed. Oh, he hit it again. My guy. All right. All right. Okay. Oh, there he is. On the T-Flasher, guys. <laughs> That's one thing about them sand bass, man. Them juggles can fight. Look, I just need a few. Sand bass have to be 10 inches like crappie. I'm going to see if I can get one better than that. Come on, come on, bro. I'm trying to get your homeboys. I'm trying to get your homeboys. So, again, I'm using a technique, man, that I know people have used for a lot of years. And what that is, man, number one, we're just spooning for them. Um, there we go. We're going to see if we can get couple more better size fish only need about two or three see what kind of table fare we got man out here today man and been doing some fishing it's been a little slow and all i'm gonna do is just give it a couple of raises off the bottom um these fish are right off the bottom and i'm just i'm keeping them keeping them enticed there he is there he is Oh, boy, these pound for pound can fight, man. Pound for pound, they can really get after it. Okay, there's a better fish. There we go. That's more than what we're looking for right there, man. We're going to keep a couple of these. We're going 
gonna find out what they about. Man, that T-Flash, I tell you what. You drop that flasher down there if you want to. Boy, I mean, he got a mouth full of that. But look at He got a mouth full of that flasher. Man, guys, these, they work well for uh, crappie too, man. I've heard they do real well up north with crappie. Now, I know for sure that's a 10-inch sand bass. We're gonna put him in there. We're gonna take a couple of those home. We're gonna take a couple of those home. Put the knife to his dough. I'm gonna keep stomping. Hopefully these sand bags keep chomping. Let's see what happens. Another one, y'all. Again, I'm just gonna keep my foot tapping. Cause those fish are down. They are down. That's another decent one, man. I think that's another 10. I'll be careful with these sand bags. They will. They have a really hard gill plates, man. So that's another one. Another one. We can get one bigger than that, y'all. Come on. Funny thing is, this lake is not known. God, dog, I almost ripped. <laughs> that one I almost ripped the goddamn. <laughs> Boy, y'all look at this. I hope y'all can see how this dog goes. Seven and a half foot ACC is working out, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, gotta be careful with these doggone things. I ain't trying to get no hook in my hand. But man, I love using that seven and a half, man. I like using my long garage crappie fishing. But I tell you what, if you want more of a fight, that's actually a real good 10. I guarantee you that's a, that's a 10. Brought y'all to the front so y'all can see what's going on here. All right, I dropped that down. I ain't, I ain't even looking for my jig at this point. I know they're all up under the boat. So I'm just, there you go. God, do I got it? Yeah. There he is coming up, y'all. That's a little one there. Oh, man, that's actually a yellow bass. That's actually a yellow bass. I mean, they are down there chomping. Sorry about the noise, man. I'm trying to keep the fish under the boat, and it's actually working. All right, there I'm going back down. Man, y'all, I'm going to tell you something. This is one of the easiest fish to catch. When they're schooling up, when they're doing their thing, there he is again. There he is coming up right there, y'all. Now, check out how the other fish are actually. I'm going to let him back down. I'm letting him back down slow. Watch this. The other fish actually will chase him. Look at them coming. They'll chase him. That's why it's cool to have on more than one. Look at that. That's what live scope affords us, to see how they react. So a fish gets hooked, and look at all those fish coming up off the bottom, wanting to get a piece of whatever that is that dude has. Y'all look, man. Look, come on, y'all. Come on, man. That's fun, man. That's fun for, I don't care how old you are, if you like catching fish, this sand bass stuff is too fun. They aren't my first choice when it comes to eating fish. But man, pound for pound, they fight hard. And it's hard to beat them. Hard to beat them. Man, I tell you what. So here's a here's an up, up close look at this little bait, man. And I mean, it is wearing them out. That's the T-Flasher from Euro Tackle. Y'all get y'all some Euro Tackle. <clears throat> y'all can see still on the bottom all those fish coming across the bottom right there man and i'm just stomping to make sure they stop and and hang out with me for a minute and when they do look there's another one already three four of them i missed i missed i mean they're down there like wolves y'all there's my bait chasing me up got it oh missed that one you see how I got them riled up? Look, and they just nail it. He's caught. Look at them chasing them up, man. Now, if that ain't no mean fish, I don't know what it is. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's a, that's a better one, too. Ooh. That's a better one. Again, they have to be 10 inches in Texas, man. Oh, he came back. <laughs> I'm telling you, boy, don't get no funnier than this. Oh. But it wouldn't be a surprise if there was a crappie mixed in. There's a lot of lakes that you see crappie mixed in with sand bass. There's another one, y'all. T-Flasher, man. Golly. 
I got a bunch of these jokes. Look, that's one thing about that sandbag. He going to flare his gills out at you. You better make sure you hold them. Because the thing is, man, these sandbags, they know that their gill plates are sharp. And that's what they'll use, especially if they're getting eaten by another fish. They'll flare the gills out to try to keep from getting swallowed. But y'all see it, man. That's a 10. I ain't going to take him. I, the last two I kept were 12s. Um, see if we can get one, one doggy. But, man, I, it's literally the easiest thing, man. It's just an up and down motion. God. I got a feeling. It's just an up and down motion. And uh, the way they're hidden. Man, y'all. Look at my rod. I'm almost wanting to call for help just so somebody can come over here and catch these with me, man. I'm so serious. Look at this. Somebody come and look at this. Again, that's another keeper. Not giants, man, but great fight, guys. Great fight. And all I got is it's, it's just a single, it's just a single uh, treble hook. Man, on a black and chartreuse, made out of tungsten. So this thing falls like, I mean, it falls. And those fish are just sitting on the bottom. And what I'm doing is I'm just hitting the bottom and I'm coming up and those fish are coming right behind that bait. Loading it up. That's the easiest part, man. So the hardest part about this is locating these fish. Right now I'm in 24 foot of water. And I'm not, not necessarily on a point. I just came across these fish, man. Um, but usually you can find sand bass schooling across points or, or windblown banks. Um, look at that joke. He trying his best to cut me. Not today, homeboy. You cut me, I'm cutting you. And this is an age-old technique, man, to keep sand bass in a, in, a, in a feeding frenzy right here. And again, all we're doing is just tapping on the boat, and that's keeping them under there because these fish think that there's something going on. And there, there's a smaller specimen, but still yet another one, man. This, I day. I'm having fun, son. That's what we're using right there. I just got hit again. Touch that treble hook. They supposed to be in some treble, you hear me? Oh, that fish came up, man, about 10 foot. From 24 foot up to 14 before he hit. But he hit it, buddy. That's a better fish. I think that was gonna get to come home with us too. That's what we're looking for, a little bit better fish. You better chill flaring those gills. Hope you wrote your wheel. I got some grease you finna feel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, that one gotta go home, man. That's a good one there. Good one there. Y'all see it. All right, guys, I had fun with the T-Flasher. I'm going to switch it up one time, man, and just see if they want crappie jigs. So I'm going to go in here, and I have some, uh, I got some tungsten jig heads by Euro Tackle that y'all know. Uh oh no. Got these tungsten jig heads that y'all know I love to use as well. Euro Tackles. Y'all get y'all some, man, with the Smart Lock technology. Um, got a pearl one on. I've, I've heard that they like, that they really like uh, white colored baits. So I'm gonna start off wearing some kind of murky water and it's an overcast day. So I'm not sure how well a white bait will work. We're gonna go pink. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the uh, two inch B-Vibe by Euro Tackle. Y'all see it? Still tapping on the bottom. I think I lost a few fish. But we're gonna put this B vibe on this uh, pearl head and see if another one won't come up and slam it. Oh. Oh. That pink made him think. See how much bigger he is.
Y'all see it, man. That's another one again. That's a keeper. And we're going to keep on tapping on this boat, man. It works, guys. If y'all are around sand bass or think you might be around sand bass and you want to keep them around so that they'll continue to bite for you, then you can just take your foot and start patting on the boat. And I don't know whoever figured that out. It don't work for crappie, that's for sure. But for uh, schooling fish, these sand bass, your striper will actually uh, react to it. So y'all try it out, man. Age old trick, you heard it from Fish and Ken. Let's go, baby. pink in there y'all that pink make them think it's looking delicious and nutritious boy they want some of that Ooh, let's see how many i got in there i don't need too many i got two three we'll make this one four we'll make four we'll make four but we're gonna sit here and have a little more fun see y'all at the house just like that man we back here at the house. Look, had to do a little makeshift arrangement to clean our um, our sandbags. We got the sandbags here, man. We got them here. Well, listen, today we're going to do a quick clean um, using our Outrigger Outdoors, man. VG10. This is a new knife I just had sent to me, man. I'm going to tell you something. I'm really liking it. Number one, I love the colors. Green and orange goes together well. Um, real comfortable in my hand. A lot of people, I mean, it's, it's got the flex. It's got the flex that you're gonna need to ride down these the, the bones, the uh, spines of these fish. So we're gonna we're gonna see what it does right out the box. Fishing cat. Mm -hmm. Okay, stand back, cause daddy's gonna cut. Okay. Oh yeah, I can tell you now. I can tell you now that thing is nice. Listen, we're gonna go ahead and try to go. Oh man, look at there. Barely any movement, just slide. Guys, anytime you can just slide a knife, I'm telling you now, you got a sharp knife. VG10, man, look, if you're looking for one of these types of knives, man, get it at uh, OutriggerOutdoors.com. Check them out, man. And if you decide to purchase this knife or anything on that website, man, make sure you put in the promo code HC10 so your boy can get a little bit of credit. That way they'll know you heard about the knife from Hook City TV. But man, I'm gonna tell you something. So the first cut was made, then we're just gonna make another cut. Man, I'm talking about, and just look at the slide. Oh my gosh. I tell you what, man, it's great to have one of these, um, especially for our electric knife guys. If something happens, power goes out, you're at the lake and you wanna do some cleaning, this is what you're gonna need. So I'm glad to have this in the arsenal. Y'all will be seeing this light, this knife a lot. Very sharp, man, comes with a, really good edge on it as you can see first cut with this particular knife right out the package man i love it that's what it is so we got our fillet right there um and we do need to cut the red out because these are sand bass um let's keep it moving so one thing that you can notice with these uh sand bass fillets is that they have a lot of red meat in them guys that junk tastes disgusting um, I know some people bleed their sand bass, um, which I did not do. I was in such a rush and having such a good time, I didn't do it. But what we're gonna do now is actually trim that red out. And you can see with this filet here, I've actually got a lot of it out of there. We're gonna try to get it all out. On this one, this is how it looks um, before it is trimmed. And all we're gonna do, let's move these to the side. So all I'm gonna do is basically just take my knife, a sharp knife, I'm gonna press in, and I'm gonna just make a really, I mean, we're just trying to barely get under there. I mean, we're trying to do like some sushi style slices. All right? And that gets that red off. Flip it around and we're gonna go down the other way. Again, we're just trying to make some little slices 
to get that red out, man. That red is not good. It's what gives it gives it its fishy or gamey taste that a lot of people do not like. That's actually enough off of there. Um, clean it, clean it to your desire, man. But I can tell you now, once you taste that red, you'll know how much of it you want on there and how much you don't. To me, once I once I do it, you know, clean it up. That's the fillet I want to see right there. Again, this is how it'll look when you first fillet it off, and then that's what it's going to look like. Excuse me, when you first fillet it off of the bones, that's how it'll look. And this is how it looks once you've trimmed it down some. So use, lose a little bit of meat, let it soak in some water, or listen, if you're hungry, put that joker in that grease, and all the rest will release. We're going to keep uh, cleaning these up, man, and it's going to be time to get in the kitchen, y'all. Back in the kitchen, it's time to cook these sand bass. Now look, man, I think I've already said it before. If I haven't, hear me out. I am not a big fan of sand bass. Not a big fan of sand bass. Um, it's been a little bit, uh, and I know I got to get y'all this catch, clean, and cook. So what I did is I've had these things soaked, and I've actually even frozen them. Uh, it's been, I think, maybe two, three weeks. Um, but we're going to go ahead and cook these. These white bass, y'all see it. This is what we got. If you see the discoloration, it's because I was deciding, uh, I was gonna do the half shell with these, and I've decided not to do the half shell deal, especially this late at night. Um, but we're gonna fry these, man, um, because that's really your safest bet. Anytime you're dealing with a fish that you're not used to, you're not sure about the taste, the best thing to do is fry. Y'all know your boy is the fry guy. Like, that's one thing I can do. Don't do it often, but we are going to be doing it today. Um, man, here we go. We're going to pat dry these uh, these fillets. And uh, I want to make sure that there's no moisture in them. Again, when you're frying stuff and you have moisture in it, you see the funny stories or the funny uh, videos of people dropping something in some hot grease from real far away. It's because they're dealing with moisture. Anytime you're dealing with moisture, you're going to get that popping and going crazy and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to pat dry to make sure we don't have a bunch of moisture, a bunch of water um, on these fillets. Now, um, while I'm kind of letting them sit out and dry, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna be using um, cholesterol-free oil blend. We, tr we trying, y'all. Number one, we don't fry often, but when we do, we're gonna try to get some heart-healthy stuff going. So we're gonna use some, uh, some Smart Balance cholesterol-free. Um, and listen, you cannot be, let me, hold on. You cannot beat this right here. This cast iron, this keeps away thieves and fries anything that needs to be fried. Listen, mm, but I'm not going to use it tonight. Not gonna use it. I'm only frying a little bit of fish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this baby right here. Look, I think, what is this called? Saucepan? Y'all help me out. Uh, uh, yeah, it's not a pan. It's a pot, right? Anyway, this is what we're going to use today. We only have a few fillets. So we're gonna use this with a little bit of this. Let's get it popping. So guys, anytime I fry, I always tell people, do not heat your grease up real fast. So I'm gonna light my little low stove. I'm gonna put it on about halfway. For y'all that don't know how to cook, we're gonna start, actually we're gonna go one past half. Um, we got low to high with one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna put it on about four and a half, about four, four and a half. We're going to give it time to just naturally heat up without going crazy. You do not want your grease to start burning. That's going to cause your fish to taste nasty. All right, now, got me a Ziploc bag. And, man, y'all forgive me. I'm going to try to put the name down in the bottom of the guy that sent me this JT Pollard's Extra Fine Cornmeal. That right there, I appreciate that, man. That came from one of the subscribers in the city. And this stuff, JT Pollard's Extra Fine, comes straight out of Hartford, Alabama. If y'all know about Hartford, Alabama, or, or you know about J.T. Pollard's cornmeal, um, let me know in the comment section, man. I will be using this um, when I fry. I'm actually very thankful and grateful for this. I'm trying to take this big old deal off so I can get into it. Now, guys, we're going to see how this does because this is actually a white, extra fine white cornmeal. When I'm going to take my Ziploc, I'm just going to put me a little bit of it in it. Okay, put me a little bit of it in it. Not, not too much, not a whole lot, but that's what we're gonna be using. That is what we're using right there, man. Um, 
Grease is starting to warm, so I like that. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, man, you're not finna, um, you're not going to um, season your batter or none of that kind of stuff. No, I'm not. So this is what I'm gonna do. Um, for me, when I fry fish, I like to put my seasoning on afterwards, and it's almost always lemon pepper. We're not gonna deviate today again, because I'm suspect about these white bass. But this is what I'm gonna do. Um, Y'all seen people coat your fish in mustard, egg. Um, you can even use mayonnaise if you want to. Um, but this is what I'm gonna be coated with today, man. Again, we're gonna we're gonna try to get it going. So um, Frank's Red Hot Wing Sauce. Picked this up the other day. Haven't made any wings. Today we are gonna give these sandbags some wings. We got we got this thing uh, coated up. And I'm gonna wait until my grease gets hot before I uh, drop drop it in the cornmeal and then into the grease. I want it to all be one fluid step. But I tell you what, I'm a hot, hot sauce fan, so I know this is gonna help. It, it smells good to my nose. I'm gonna get my hands rinsed off. Waiting on that. I'm gonna tell you what, guys, your grease will let you know when it's ready. Don't wait for it to start smoking but grease will start moving, and you might even hear a pop or two. If that goes on, it's time to drop, and you can also test your grease too. Always good to keep your little towel on deck while you're cooking. Listen, fellas, quick word of advice. Women love a clean cook. Know your way around the kitchen. Daddy used to always tell me, you better learn how to cook for yourself, boy, because that woman get mad at you, she'll starve you out. Y'all see I ain't starving. Whew, we're getting close. We're getting close. So look, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare a uh, a plate. I always have this stuff ready, man. Um, I'm gonna take a couple of paper towels. We're not gonna use like a, a drip pan or anything like that. So I'm gonna take a few paper towels, put them inside my uh, plate. That way, I have somewhere to put my fillets when they're done. Be prepared, man. Be prepared. So there's that. Grease is steady getting hot. And we're getting there, man. My grease is actually starting to move. I'll show y'all what I'm talking about. So if y'all can see, man, that grease is, is starting to move. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. That grease is starting to move. I put my hand over it. I can feel it getting hot. Oh, uh, yeah, it's fixing to get good. Like I said, you'll start to see bubbles as well when it gets hot, but we're getting real close by the movement of that grease. I can tell you that now. I'm trusting that my grease is up to temperature, man. Again, we're doing something a little different with this white cornmeal and especially with these fillets. So this is the fillet that I didn't cut the red out of. Again, I did that on purpose. So I wanted to kind of see with it being soaked, I wanted to see with, with just a little bit of dull red what it would do. Another thing, I like to do guys, I don't like for my flour to clump up, so I don't drown them. I don't put a whole bunch of fish in at one time, but here's one filet, we're gonna see. Oh yeah, he hot, he hot. Look, look, look what we got. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's get a couple in there. Notice after I put each piece of fish in there, I shake my uh, flour, that way it can get coated and it's not just being wet running around in my flour. Again, I just don't like clumps. It makes for an evenly battered piece of fish. So that's the way we're gonna do that. It came from and it's smelling good. Look, let me tell you something. If you fry fish and it ain't doing that when you're frying it, I don't want it. Let's go, baby. So guys, this is a real important step and you want to do it while your fish is still hot, while the grease is still really on it. So man, I got my Adam's lemon pepper. Not sure what brand y'all use, but that's the one we use over here at this house. So guys, now I want to sprinkle on my lemon pepper. Okay, I don't have to get crazy with it, but I want to sprinkle it on now. Now what that, for me, in my mind, what that does is 
the hot grease helps to let that lemon pepper absorb into your fish, into your cornmeal. You get everything you need out of your seasoning and it don't take a lot. When you have to put your seasoning inside of your cornmeal, for me, it takes more to get the flavor and the taste that you want. So that way we want to do it as soon as it comes out of the grease. And that's what you get. That right there is what you get, man. We got a few more pieces to drop and then we're going to taste this and see what we come up with. Just like that, I have completed frying this sand bass. Now this is a different kind of fish, bro. This is sand bass. You've never ate sand bass before, okay? Y'all know who this is. Fishing came in, got my sidekick with me. That's yeah. my, my favorite girl right there. And she is a six-year-old professional taste tester. Yes, but I thought you were my sidekick. Oh, no, I'm your side. No, you're my sidekick. No, you just said I... Oh, well, I meant sidekick. to say you're my sidekick. Let's just say nobody's their sidekick. You don't want to be a sidekick? Right. Well, that's Fishy Cammy. Y'all know who I am. Let's eat, y'all. Can you say the grace? And say a good grace, not a fast grace. I want to hear good grace. We want to thank God for this food. Heavenly Talk loud. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. I pray that you keep this food um, safe. Um, cover our food from Corona. And, and don't let any, any no virus or nothing bad to touch us. Yes, God. In Jesus' name. Thank you, know, you for this food. Thank you for this food. I pray that you make this food nice and fresh for us to eat. In Jesus' name, I pray and ask him all. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. So, I know you want your lemon, but before you go into the lemon, you have these little bitty pieces. So, guys, we got some itty bitty small pieces, and then we have some of these bigger pieces. That looks fat. It looks fat. Yeah. And then we got some little strips, which is what I've been eyeing. So, Cammie, I want you to give me your honest opinion on fried sand bass dipped in hot sauce. I fried this with hot sauce. And it's also got white cornmeal instead of yellow cornmeal. So, grab a piece and let me know what you think. Hot sauce is my middle name. Hot sauce is your middle name? Yeah. Okay. Camden Hot Sauce Pierce. Okay, come on. Mm, I can hear the crunch. <laughs> what? No, seriously. I need an honest opinion. Crazy. Don't be crazy. I need an honest opinion. Do you like that? Help me, Mama. Help me, Mama. Is it that good you need help, Mama to help you? You know what I mean? What you think, for real? It's, it's very good. It's very good. No. It ain't good. I'm kidding. It's good. You do like it. Okay. I think you just like fish. We're gonna put this over there. Now do you want to taste some with the with the lemon on it? Mm-hmm. Okay, squeeze you a little bit of lemon on it and see if you if you put a little bit of mm. all right, that's enough. You don't want it to start swimming. Don't want to come back. Can you taste the hot sauce though? Can you taste it? I put hot sauce on it? Mm -mm. Okay. Oh man, that crunch just gets some. It does something to me. That's like commercial crunch. One thing I can do, y'all, I know I can fry some food. Lord, it ain't the best, but I know I can do it. What you think? Oh, 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 you like it? Okay, okay, okay. So I gotta try a piece. Okay, sit up so they can try a piece. Okay. Um, any, mini, my. I said I was eyeing this one. All right. So any, mini, my. Did you like the lemon pepper flavor? That was delicious. Okay. Love you. Thank you. Kiss the cook. I know. I know. All right, y'all. Here we go. You better not be acting like you got a cry. Man, it still does have a little bit of that sand bass taste. And of course, you're supposed to be able to taste the fish. But whoever fried this fish knew what they were doing. 
I was a little worried about that white cornmeal. That white cornmeal is just as good. And then it's fine. It's not the real coarse cornmeal. Hold on, guys. It's not the real coarse cornmeal. Um, the fish flavor is there, but it isn't fishy. But I definitely know this is sandbags. Um, a lot of people say it's a close second to, to crappie. I wouldn't I wouldn't give it that. But whoever fried, I don't know if I told y'all, whoever fried this fish, they're probably missing a the foot. They knew what they was doing when they fried it. I would eat this. I would eat this. Uh-uh. Right. So, guys, okay. Okay. So, um, it, who cooked this is obviously Y-O-U. Mm. You're right. You're right, baby. You got obviously, it. it's you. Mm-hmm. Obviously. That, that's actually good. So, Cause guys, if I had to, if I had to give it a between, yeah, what is that? And Cloud have mercy. That's good. That ain't gonna make me cry. I know y'all want to see me cry. That ain't gonna make me cry. But it's good enough to eat, guys. So if you're out there, the crappie are missing, and y'all doing some sand bass fishing, I understand now. I've never really been too much of a sand bass fan. But again, I let this stuff soak. I got as much blood out. Y'all saw me cut as much blood out as I could. A lot of prep. You don't have to do that prep with crappie. It don't taste like crappie, but it's all right. And you going to keep eating it or are you done? I'm not finished, baby. Okay. Now, let me tell you something. There, are, there is a piece that I didn't really I'm cut eat this baby. all of the blood out, and I just want to know what that is like. So, And the meat even looks a little different. Let me see. Still not that bad. I think it's crunchy. You want some lemon? Mm -mm. Mm. I'll share this with myself then. Okay, well don't go crazy, baby. I don't want you to get, get your stomach hurting. Look at that. You're going to drink it. Eat the fish. Eat the fish, anime. Eat the fish, then which thing? Yeah. Oh, well, duh. You put a lot of lemon on it. Crunchy. You still mm. like it? Well, guys, it's in, man. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so y'all will be notified when we drop more hot content. Let us know in the comment section what you thought, if you want to see us do a little bit more sand bass fishing. Um, I'm going to keep the Catch Clean Cooks co coming because I absolutely love doing them. And if you do too, put Catch Clean and Cook in the comment section, man. It's your boy, Fishing Ken. And fish is gammy. We out here. Wait. So I need to tell you one thing, guys. This, you need to cook this baby. Like, seriously. And what I'm going to say is subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you. And Thank you. if you like it, and. Yeah, quit hitting that thumbs down button. You haters out there, but that's alright. We out here.